Hello and welcome to IoT Gyan. This is Tapan. And today in this lecture, we try to understand how to use Node MCU as a MQTT client. So let's start. So first of all, you must have an idea what is an MQTT. MQTT is nothing but it is an application layer protocol built on the top of TCP IP. So here you can see on the left hand side, I am having different embedded devices including sensors and to sensors I have connected it to microcontrollers so which may be node MCU or Arduino or Raspberry Pi it totally depends upon me so once I am having data with me so the next step is to send this data to this cloud so I am having m number of options to send this data to the cloud on the RF level or the short range communication I can use Zigbee or I can use Wi-Fi so till the time I am having the data on the access point thereafter I am having a choice to decide now how to send this data from the gateway to the cloud. So this is the point where the protocols comes and play their role. So here from, from gateway to the cloud I am using the MQTT as a protocol. So it is built on TCP IP which is a connection oriented protocol. In the same way, uh, this is the uh, forward flow and this is the backward flow. This is for uh, this is for transmitting the status, real time status of a device or I want when I want to send some data from sensor to the cloud. And this is the backward flow in which I want to actuate some action onto the devices which may be anything. It may be a smartphone or laptop. It may be a program on laptop or it may actuate an action like glowing an LED on uh, Arduino board or Node MCU. So in this way, right now you can see uh, who is using MQTT. It is used by IBM uh, globally. You can see uh, many of the universities and research center, they are using MQTT. Right now, MQTT, uh, Facebook Messenger, it is also using MQTT as a protocol to send. See, uh, what is the role of MQTT when we are sending any message to our friend, whether he is online or offline, message, it is forwarded and when, as soon as my friend comes online, it, it is able to get the data. So that is why how the MQTT works. So here I am showing you the many of the use cases. Uh, it is used in a smart home application or automation. It is used in supply chain management, online chat in a smartphones, or it is presently used in a smart energy metering. So this is all about the MQTT infrastructure. Let's move ahead. So this is again the flow diagram. So here, whenever you are dealing with the MQTT, always you have a sender, which is known as publisher and a receiver who is known as subscriber their role uh, their role can be interchanged as per their activity right now this entity it is interested in sending the data that's why it is the publisher and whenever it is publishing message to a broker which is the middleman which is keeping the track of all the topics topics means for example let's take an example of newspaper agency uh, it is the times of india news agency and it is me as a subscriber. If I am interested in Times of India, then it is the duty of the middleman or the newspaper distributing agency to keep a track whether I am interested in Times of India or Hindustan Times. So he'll take the same way MQTT is playing its role. So uh, as, as in the practical case, Hindustan Times is the name of the topic here. Uh, here in MQTT also the name of the topic will be passed to the MQTT broker and the MQTT broker will distribute the data according to their topics. So uh, when it will be acting as a subscriber at that time, also it will write some subtopic. At the time of publishing, it will be writing pop topic. So throughout the time MQTT is working, it will be working on topics only. So uh, whenever you are using node mcu so node mcu will act as a hardware client of mqtt 
so there may be a software client also as you can see in this diagram let's see uh, uh, this is the example of node mcu as a hardware client there may be a software client like mqtt lens which is available on the internet you can download it so you can send the message from one mqtt lens to another mqtt lens so what is it it is one uh, uh, google chrome has provided it as an open source software for mqtt so you can go to the internet and download this app and here you can see that this is the hardware client whenever it will be uh, publishing some data on the topic called sensor let's say here i have connected some light sensor or humidity sensor so it will be publishing the data based upon the topics called sensor and this mqtt uh, broker it will be the first entity to which this data or the information will reach thereafter it will be its his responsibility to this uh, to distribute this data based upon the choice of the subscriber so that will be a pop topic and always remember that pop topic should match with the sub topic means, the, means there should be a common topic between the publisher and the subscriber then only this communication will be possible so there is a question that already http protocol was available then why there was a need for mqtt so let's take a look at the uh, differentiating points first the protocol this http it is a document centric but mqtt protocol it is a data centric so this is one of the most important point http it always works on request and response architecture see from your computer or from your browser in the url you are typing the name of a website so from your computer you are sending a request and based upon your request the server for example you are typing www.google.co.in so based upon this request the google server will respond you with its html page so this is the theme how http works upon but in mqtt uh, uh, protocol as we have seen it totally works upon publish and subscribe model so in this way they are different in http you can see that it is a complex and it is less flexible but in mqtt protocol in 60 or 65 pages its complete specification has been given so you are not supposed to remember more and more of a functions its architecture and its specification they are very small and easy to use then the http it runs on user datagram protocol which is a connectionless protocol but as far as this mqtt is concerned it runs on tcp which is again a transmission control protocol which is a connection oriented service in http the message site it is large in ascii format of course see uh, whenever if you are uh, going to the internet uh, you will find that in order to send only two byte bytes of data such as temperature or humidity it is containing only uh, two things like uh, 25 degrees celsius or 45 or whatever so just to send the two bytes of data you need to send a total header of 330 bytes so that is again a big big one so whenever uh, uh, we are using http header cost size uh, as per to the he header cost it is expensive because it is containing lots of headers but in mqtt it it, it is one tenth or one eighth of the data as compared to the http here http it runs on uh, is, uh, it runs on port number 80 or 8080 but in mqtt it runs on tcp port number 1883 in http uh, there is no inbuilt qos in the http but in mqtt at the application level a user can have a choice of the QS whether he wants to go with QS 0 or QS 1 or QS 2 so these three quality of services they are available in MQTT so uh, we will come to know uh, in detail about the QS but this is the point of difference in HTTP it has no data security uh, so for as far as end-to-end -end security is concerned it is not having any data security but in MQTT protocol itself it is having ssl or secured 
security shell or TLS for data security. So as in the security point of view, MPDT it is much much better than HTTP. So this is all about this site, and we'll meet in the next session. Till that time, thank you and goodbye.